morning boys and girls we're going to read a story today and it's called the three little pigs by barry mosley once upon a time when animals could talk the same as people three little pigs lived with their mother in a forest it was valentine's day when big mama said it's time for you to go in a wide world to seek your fortune. But remember, beware of the big bad wolf. Then she kissed them all around and the three little pigs set out on their travels, each taking a different road. The first little pig hadn't gone far before he met a man carrying a bundle of straw. Please, asked the pig, Will you give me some of that straw to build the house? Certainly, replied the man, and he gave the pig a big bundle. See the big bundle of straw he's gonna get? No sooner had the little pig finished the house when a wolf came along, knocked at the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me in. But the little pig just laughed and answered, no, no, not now, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf said loudly, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in because it was only straw. Then the wolf ate up the little pig and didn't leave so much as a tip of his curly tail. Look at how he's huffing and puffing there. The second little pig also met a man, and this man was carrying a bundle of wood. Please, said the little pig politely, will you give me some wood to build a house? The man agreed, and the piggy set to work building himself a snug little house. It was scarcely finished when the wolf came along and said, little pig, little pig, let me in. No, 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 not by my hair, my chinny chin chin, asked the pig. Then the wolf huffed, and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed, and he puffed and he huffed, and at last he blew the house in and gobbled the little pig right up. Oh, look at how big and fat that wolf is now. He's not a very nice wolf. Now the third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said, Please, may I have some bricks to build a house? The man agreed and gave the pig some mortar and a trowel. And the little pig built himself a nice, strong little house. As soon as it was finished, the wolf came to call, just as he had done to the other little pigs and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the little pig answered, no, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Well, he's really huffing and puffing to blow that brick house in. Well, the wolf huffed and puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow the house in. At last he had no breath left to huff and puff, so he sat down outside the little pig's house to think. Wow, look at the wolf right now. He is really panty. Look how skinny he is too right now. Well, let's see what happens next. After a while, the wolf called out, little pig, I know where there's a nice field of turnips. Where, said the little pig behind the farmer's house, three fields away. I'll meet you here tomorrow morning at six, and we'll go there together and get some breakfast. All right, said the little pig, I'll be ready. Well, the smart little pig got up at five, scampered away to the field, and brought home a fine load of turnips before the wolf came. At six o'clock, the wolf came to the little pig's house and said, little pig, are you ready? Ready? cried the little pig. I've been to the field and back long ago, and now I'm busy boiling a pot full of turnips 
for breakfast. He really tricked that wolf, didn't he? Smart little pig. Well, the wolf was very angry indeed, but he made up his mind to catch the little pig some way or another. So he told him that he knew where there was a nice apple tree. Where? asked the little pig. Around the hill in the orchard, the wolf said. If you promise not to play any more tricks, I'll meet you here tomorrow morning at five o'clock and we'll go there and get some apples. The next morning, the piggy got up at four o'clock and was gone long before the wolf came. But the orchard was a long way off, and besides, he had the tree to climb, which is not an easy matter for a little pig. So before he had filled the sack he brought, he saw the wolf coming toward him. Okay, so the little pig is already there, picking the apple. And there comes the wolf. The little pig was dreadfully afraid, but he thought it better to try to outsmart the wolf. So when the wolf said, little pig, why are you here before me? Are they nice apples? He replied at once, yes, very. I'll throw one down for you to taste. So he picked an apple and threw it so far that the little wolf was running far away to fetch it. The little pig got out of the tree and scampered away. The next day, the wolf came again and told the little pig that there was going to be a fair in the town that afternoon and asked him if he wanted to go together. So here he was with the apple tree and he threw the apple far away so that the, the wolf would have to go get it so he could get away. Oh yes, said the pig, I'll go with pleasure. What time will you be ready to start? At half past three, said the wolf. Of course, the little pig started along before that time and went to the fair and bought a fine large churn made by the Huffin and Muffin Churn Company. He was trotting away with it on his back when he saw the wolf coming. He didn't know what else to do, so he crept inside the churn to hide. But the churn started rolling and down the hill it went, rolling over and over with the little pig squealing inside. The wolf couldn't imagine what the strange thing rolling down the hill could be. So he turned tail in fright and ran away home without going to the fair at all. Then he went to the little pig's house to tell him how scared he had been by this large thing rolling down the hill. There he is, the pig is in that churn and it's rolling and he's squealing. And so the wolf is very scared. Ha, 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 laughed the little pig. So I scared you, eh? I'd been to the fair and bought a butter churn. When I saw you, I got inside and rolled down the hill. This made the wolf so angry that he declared he'd jump down the chimney and eat this little pig. Oh, look at the pig, he's so happy, but look at the angry wolf. Ooh, look at those teeth, Ugh, I'd be scared. But the clever little pig put a pot of water on the heat and made a blazing fire. Just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the pig took off the cover and in fell the wolf. In a second, the little pig had popped the lid on again. The little pig had wolf stew for supper. And after he lived happily all his days and was never troubled by a wolf again. So look at this, now he caught the wolf and made stew out of him. And notice his slippers that the pig has on right now. Well, that was kind of an interesting story, wasn't it? Okay, we are going to do a fun activity to go with that. And what we're going to do is make our own little pig. Okay, what we're going to need is a paper plate. As you can see, I have a paper plate here. Now you can use any size paper plate. It doesn't make any difference what size you use. Then you're gonna need some glue, you're gonna need a scissors, maybe crayons, markers, whatever you have laying around at home would work really well for this project. What we're gonna make is a pig, okay? So you take your paper plate, 
you can either paint it pink or you can color it pink. Whatever you have at home would work great. Then what you need to do is to make your ears. And when you make the ears for the pig, all you need is a triangle. And you can make them any size you want. And then for the pig's snout, you can make an oval shape. It's kind of like a circle, but it's a little bit more like an egg shape. And then you're gonna glue that on there. And then you can use markers to make his nostrils. You can make the eyes, you can draw them on, or you can use um, anything that you have in the house. Maybe you have some of those googly eyes or whatever. That would work also. So when you get this project done, if you want, you can share it by sending it to our library. And then you can put it on your refrigerator, whatever you feel like doing with your piggy. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this story and we'll see you next Tuesday for story time. Have a great day. Bye.